very top of this. This isn't. Uh, this was said on the Empire podcast by Helen O'Hara, and she's br a brilliant film journalist. Um, so I can't claim credit for this, but I wish I, <laughs> I wish I was smart enough to have noticed this. The romantic relationship between Trinity and Neo is so unique because the tried and tested trope, especially in a blockbuster, in a movie with the protagonist as a male, is that the love interest is won over by his acts of valor. And usually there's a fridging kind of scenario whereby uh, all they have to do is to put her in peril and da -da -da -da, the hero charges in, saves the day. Um, everything's fine. It is the exact opposite of that. It's not even the exact opposite. It is just a totally different love story in terms of status. When they first meet, Trinity is up here. Neo is nowhere. He is a he is a <laughs> he, he's Bambi on on he's Bambi on the frozen lake. Like he he is bouncing around from new revelation to new revelation, and all the time she is there to support him. But she is est she she's weighing him up. She's estimating him. She's looking at him. She's, and we don't know all the way through this that there's the prophecy lying uh, kind of over everything. But it's the moment, it's the moment that he realizes that perhaps he's not the one. And if he's not the one, then he can just accept that and move on. But the thing that's important to him is saving the people around him and sacrificing himself. And in that moment, it's, she falls in love with him, not because of his prowess or his valor or his strength. It's for his ability to accept his flaws and to see the world in a new in a, in a new way and put others first. She falls in love with him, and because she falls in love with him, the whole prophecy comes round. So, in terms of a relationship, it is completely inverted. It is. Completely